Hello everyone, welcome to our lecture number six in, in our introduction to CFD course. This time around we're going to be working with a flow through a butterfly valve. So basically we know that stuff like pumps and compressors are commonplace in engineering, especially in hydraulics. And a, an estimate of the pumping requirement can be calculated based on the height difference between the source and the destination and also the, the head loss, right? So the head loss uh, is caused by many things. Among other things, we, they are caused by the roughness of the pipe walls as well as any other obstructions or joints along the way, right? So Investigating the detailed flow pattern around a valve or joint, however, can lead to a better understanding of why these losses occur. So you can improve the valve joint design by, sim by simulating them using CFD and reduce pumping requirements and costs. And this is very important because if you reduce the pump requirement, you also reduce the, the costs of the system because uh, nowadays, the bulk of the, the spending of the water companies are mainly electrical, right? They ma are mainly energy driven. Okay? So our problem basically consists of, uh, we have a pipe that has a 20 millimeter radius. We have a valve plate inside of it at a 45 degree angle and we have water coming in at a max velocity of five meters per second okay so actually this valve is not at 45 degrees this valve is at 55 degree angle okay but we're also going to simulate sand uh, going through our system so we're gonna have particles of sand coming through we're gonna have a rough wall this time it's not gonna be a, a smooth wall so we can simulate the erosion rate both at the pipe wall and the valve wall all right so in, in this simulation we're going to create the sand and we're going to simulate the sand using two in two ways one is going to be the fully coupled way and the other is going to be the one-way coupled way the fully coupled way is going to be used so that we have particles of sand that can interfere with our flow okay and the one-way couple is going to be used uh, so we can see the trajectory of the sand particles okay you will understand this better when we go through it all right so basically in this tutorial uh, yeah, we, you will learn how to use a rough boundary Okay, as of up until now, we only used smooth boundaries, but now we're going to use a rough boundary. We're going to create in the inlet, instead of using only uh, the normal condition where, where we used before, like imagine before we only had this, right? Imagine that we have the, the inlet here, okay? Now imagine that you're watching the inlet from the sides, okay? So basically we have is this, right? We have a line if you're watching the the inlet from the side what we had before is that everywhere it had the same magnitude okay it would it was normal to the to the face so we had something like this instead of having something like this right something like this, which would be the normal, the, the way that it actually occurs in nature, okay? But this is why we're going to use here uh, a fully developed inlet velocity profile, okay? We're going to use an equation to establish the inlet velocity, okay? Bear in mind that the, the way that we were doing is not wrong, but we need to have a longer pipe so that even if we enter it as a normal speed with these conditions when it reaches this place it would be something like this because it would be developed okay with the highest velocity at the center 
in this case we can use this because the valve is very close to the inlet so the the velocity profile will not be fully developed by the time it reaches the valve so the results will not be accurate okay so this is why we're going to use a fully developed velocity profile in the inlet okay we're also going to set up particle tracking because as i told you we're going to be working with sand and we're going to animate this particle track so you can see clearly how the sand how some particles of sand are behaving in our problem okay and at uh, lastly we're going to calculate uh, using the cfx calculator the maximum minimum and average pressure at the outlet of our simulation okay so let's do this let's open cfx there we go now let's choose our working directory okay this is going to be a flow through a butterfly valve so all the information that i need is inside this folder okay so let's choose it and let's open cfx pre There you go. Now let's create a new case. General. Okay. There we go. Now the first thing, the first thing that we must do is import the mesh. So let's go to file, import mesh. And why isn't showing here? One second. Here. It is here. Oh, I have to extract the files. I'm sorry. I didn't extract the files. Now it's gonna work. There. By the way, this is the file that I'm going to send you. All right, pipe valve R170. Now let's choose pipe valve mesh .gtm and open it. There we go. Let me remove this. As you can see, it is only half of the pipe so you can imagine that we're going to be doing something similar as to what we did before in our last lecture because we're going to use a symmetry condition here in this plane in the bottom okay so let's continue now we're going to define the properties of the sand okay so the material properties of the sand particles used in the simulation uh, need to be defined by us okay we're not gonna model heat transfer nor radiation, okay? But to calculate the effect of the particles on the continuous fluid, which is the water, we're going to use... You, you need to use between 100 and 1000 particles to do this, okay? However, if accurate information about the particle volume fraction or local forces on wall boundaries is required, then we, might, we need a much larger number of particles. So how, how do we do this when we create the domain we can either choose the full coupling or the one-way coupling between the particle and the continuous phase okay full coupling is needed to predict the effect of the particles on the continuous fluid okay so how the sand particles can affect the hydrodynamic of our system okay and this has a much higher cpu cost than the one-way coupling. The one-way coupling simply predicts the particle path during the post-processing based on the flow field, okay? But these one-way coupled particles do not affect the flow field itself. They are governed by the flow field, okay? How they, how they move in the system, all right? So, we know that we need the fully coupled but we also know that the computational cost is really high so how do we contour this this problem we're going to be using both of them we're going to be use the fully coupled way and the one coupled way because to optimize cpu usage we are going to create two sets of identical particles the first set is going to be fully coupled and we're going to use around 200 particles okay this will allow the particles to influence the flow field 
The second set we're going to use one-way couple and it's going to contain 5,000 particles and this will provide a much more accurate calculation of the particle volume fraction and local forces on the walls, okay? So for this tutorial we're going to create a descent fully coupled condition with 200 particles it's going to have a mass flow rate of 0.01 kilograms per second and the same one way coupled uh, boundary condition will have 5000 particles and the same mass flow rate of 0.01 kilograms per second okay in both cases the sand density is going to be 2300 kilograms per meter cubic the particle diameter is going to range from 50 times 10 uh, to the minus 6 to 500 times 10 to the minus 6 meters and we're going to use the Fini erosion model with a velocity power factor of 2 and a reference velocity of 1 meters per second alright so I know this was a lot of information but it was necessary so let's create our materials alright we're going to click here right click in materials insert material and we're going to name it sand fully coupled Ooh, whoops whoops i named it sand fully coupled let me do it again sand fully coupled there you go now the material group is going to be particle solids it's gonna be this one particle solids okay now go to thermodynamic state and select it. it's going to be solid right thermodynamic state solid now go to material properties in density we're going to set 2300 kilograms per meter cubic okay check the specific heat capacity box and our specific heat capacity is going to be zero okay why is it going to be zero? Because we're not going to be modeling heat transfer in this problem. Okay. Now go to thermodynamic. Where, where is it? Here, thermodynamic properties is what I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, check thermal conductivity. Okay. And the value that we're gonna set is oh sorry it's not thermal con it's reference state that I want yeah specify the point because we're gonna set the temperature of our sand particles okay so the specified temperature is gonna be 300 make sure you change the unit from Celsius to Kelvin okay so this is the sand fully coupled all right you can click apply and okay and if you expand the materials folder you can see that is created over there all right so what you're gonna do now is gonna right click it duplicate it and change the name to sand one-way coupled okay because this sand will have the same properties of the sand fully coupled what is gonna differ one to the other is how we're going to implement them in the simulation okay but their characteristics are the same all right now let's create our domain the characteristics of domain go here to double click the default domain you can delete fluid one and you can create a new one named water okay just make sure that you change the material from air at 25 celsius to water okay now let's create the the sands domains all right so we're going to create the sand fully coupled okay the the material is going to be the one that we created so we're going to click on the ellipses we're going to go here to particle solids and select sand fully coupled all right now we go to the morphology option and we change it to a particle transport solid all right now you go to particle diameter distribution and you change it from specified diameter to normal 
in diameter by mass, okay? Now, my, my CFX is having a little bug. You can see that the, the options are getting covered by the other ones, okay? So what you, if you are having this issue, I want you to do something like this, okay? Just type any number here, okay? I'm going to type a bunch of ones, all right? And leave it like this, okay? Now, let's create the send one way couples, okay? The material is gonna be send one way coupled. So we go to the ellipsis, particle solids, send one way coupled. It's not gonna be a continuous fluid, it's gonna be a particle transport solid. The particle diameter distribution is gonna be done by normal in diameter by mass. And you can see that the bug is still here. So again, you're gonna type any number, I'm going to, I'm going to put one in all of them, okay? And leave it like this, okay? Also, what we're gonna do here is gonna we, we're gonna leave the reference pressure at 1 atm, okay? And then we're gonna go to fluid bottles. We are not gonna be modeling heat transfer, so the the heat transfer option is gonna be set to none. Make sure that the turbulence model is set to the chi epsilon model. Then go to fluid specific models, okay? In the sand fully coupled, we're going to change the erosion model from none to the Fini erosion model and the reference velocity is going to be set to 1 meters per second. Make sure that the velocity power factor is 2. If you want to learn more about these erosion models, all you need to do is click anywhere in, the, in this tab and you can press F1. F1 is going to open the contextual help uh, from ANSYS and it has a lot of information about the theory regarding the the software okay and this you and this can be done in any tab if you have any doubts or you want to learn more about the the conditions that you're using you can just press f1 if you are using the cfx all right but we're not gonna uh, go into details on these erosion models because they are very complex and it would take a lot of time to go over all right so make sure that the the reference velocity is set to one then do the same for the sand one way couple choose the fini erosion model and set to one meters per second the velocity okay now go to the fluid pairs model and s make sure that the sand fully coupled is set to fully coupled and the drag force is set to the schiller nauman option okay now select send one way coupled and change it to from fully coupled to one way coupling all right and also we're going to use the schiller nauman uh, drag force option click apply and click okay okay now remember that we had this that little bug that were that was impeding us from putting the the particle diameters properly and you can also see that there is a uh, two errors here because we set the maximum diameter to be the same as the minimum diameter and the mean particle diameter is also equal to the minimum diameter because we just set a, a random value all right so what you're gonna do if you had the same bug as i did you're going to right click the default domain you're gonna go to edit in command editor this is going to be this box for you that you can edit from here. Now what you're going to look for is this thing right here. See? Maximum diameter, minimum, mean diameter, minimum diameter, and standard deviation. But now we're going to change to the correct values. Alright? We're going to change it here. The correct value for the minimum diameter is 50 minimum diameter is 50 times e which is 10 to the minus 6 okay the maximum diameter is 500 e to the minus 6 the mean diameter is 250 and the st standard deviation 
diameter is 70 times e to the minus 6 okay and we're gonna do the same to the sand one-way coupled this was the sand fully coupled you can see here and we're gonna do the same for the sand one-way coupled which you can all only do we can we can simply do this we can copy because it's the same and we can place it over here there we go if you didn't have my bug you can insert these values when we were setting the boundary conditions for the default domain over there you don't have to do this step okay now we can process and you can see that the errors have disappeared all right now let's continue now we're going to create the inlet velocity profile like we like i explained before we're going to be using equation to set the inlet velocity okay and what is this equation the equation that we're going to use is uh, the, the velocity is going to be equal to the maximum velocity in the inlet which is the center velocity right it's the velocity that is further away furthest away from the walls and it's going to be times one minus r over r max which is r is going to be the the distance from the pipe center line r max is going to be the pipe radius and this term is going to be elevated to one seventh all right so now let's create this expression you can go here in the expression right click it insert expression the first one is we're going to set the value for r max which is the pipe radius right the pipe radius as we described in the problem earlier is 20 millimeters okay now let's create another expression let's right click it here insert expression and let's tell the prob the the software what is the velocity center line what is the maximum velocity at the inlet the maximum velocity at the inlet is five meters per second okay now let's create the equation itself using these two other expressions that we used here okay so let's insert expression and we're gonna name it war w prof which would be the velocity in the z direction profile w prof all right so click ok what you're gonna do here is you can either type w max which is the expression that we created before or you can right click it go to expressions and select it all right now we have w max times the open parenthesis and we're going to right click it function look uh, cell function and we're going to use the abs function the absolute function that we used before and i explained it in the last lecture uh, what it does okay so we have the absolute uh, function there and we're going to use one minus r this r right here is a uh, a variable in in the cfx system variable okay and it's defined as r is equal to the root square of x squared plus y squared all right which is basically uh, the the distance from the pipe center line all right so this is what this r is okay and this r is going to be divided by r max okay and everything here is going to be elevated to 0 0.143 which is basically 1 over 7 okay and you need to close the parentheses if you want to check uh, if you have the right parentheses all you need to do is you can go through it and you can see that it's highlighted in blue so this blue parenthesis is has the its pair right here in the other blue parenthesis okay you can do the same with the other one if we go through this parenthesis you can see that 
these blue ones are highlighted so these are the pair parentheses okay and they and we don't have oh uh, we don't have more parentheses that we needed neither less parentheses that we needed okay and you can click apply and if nothing pops up no errors no 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 messages you know that your equation is the is correct okay just so you guys know this equation that we put there is this equation right here, all right? So let's continue. Now, what we're going to do here is insert this expression, all right? So you can close this and now what we're going to do is we're going to start creating our boundary conditions, our inlet, our outlet, our walls, our symmetry, okay? So, let's create them. Let's go here, insert boundary, and we're gonna name it inlet lowercase. Remember, everything lowercase here because the inlet was written in lowercase in this mesh, okay? So, everything here is correct. Inlet, inlet, go to boundary details, and now change from normal speed to Cartesian velocity components, okay? In the X direction, we're gonna have zero. In the Y direction, we're gonna have zero. But in the Z direction, which is this one right here, you can see it right there, we're gonna be use our expression. So we're gonna cl click here, enter expression, and we're gonna type W prof, okay? Which is the one that we, we just created, okay? Now, go to the Fluid Values tab and we're going to set how the, the, the sands are going to behave at the inlet, okay? So, make sure that sand fully couple is selected, check the defined particle behavior and now let's define them. The mass and momentum option, we're going to use the Cartesian velocity components again and it's going to be the same as the inlet velocity. Okay, there we go. Uh, we're going to use the uniform in injection and we're going to di di use the direct specification option for the number of positions because we're going to tell the, the problem how many particles of sand fully coupled we're going to use. This time we're going to use 200. Okay, and the mass flow rate is going to be 0 0.01 kilograms per second. Okay, now let's set up the sand one way coupled, and the characteristics are exactly the same ones. Okay, so we change the velocity to Cartesian velocity components, and we only use the we only and we put the expression in the z direction. The direct specification is going to be different. Remember, for the sand fully coupled, we I told you guys that we're going to use 200 particles. And for the sand one-way coupled, we're going to be using way more. We're going to use 5,000 particles, okay? The mass flow rate is still the same, okay? Now you can click, click apply and okay, and you can see that the velocity, the, the inlet was set, okay? Now, let's create our outlet boundary condition okay so the same thing go to boundary we're gonna type outlet in lower cases and the boundary type already changed it to outlet the location is already set to our uh, desired desired face now let's go to boundary details and make sure that the relative pressure is set to zero pascal all right click apply you can see that it was applied over there. Now let's create our symmetry plane condition. So let's create another one. We're going to type it sim p, which is just an abbreviation for symmetry plane. And you can see the location is already correct, but the boundary type is not. The boundary type is set to inlet. We want symmetry. Okay. And you can click apply. And you can see that this pipe wall under here is our symmetry plane. Now, let's 
create the pipe walls. Remember that we're gonna use uh, a special condition for the walls. It's gonna be a rough wall this time. Okay, it's not gonna be a smooth wall. So let's create another boundary condition and we're gonna name it pipe wall. Okay, the, the location is correct. You can see that it's selecting the pipe wall over there, but the, the boundary is not. We're gonna change it to wall, okay? Now go to boundary details and you're gonna change it, the wall roughness from smooth wall to rough wall, okay? And its roughness is gonna be of 0 0.2 millimeters. Make sure that you change from meters to millimeters, okay? And now go to the fluid values tab and we're gonna change how the sand behaves uh, for the walls, all right? So sand all the way coupled, we're going to use the restitution coefficient of the, perp the, the perpendicular one is going to be 0 0.8, okay? Make sure you, you, you do this and apply the same values for the sand one way coupled, okay? The perpendicular coefficient is going to be 0 0.8. The parallel coefficient is going to be 1, okay? Don't, don't mess with that. All right, now we, no, here's done. We can apply and okay. Now we're gonna change the one, one of our already pre-existing conditions. Uh, remember that, I, I believe I told you in, a, in past lectures that everything that you don't input a condition, a boundary condition is set to a wall. So, we created our inlet for this face, the outlet for this one, the pipe wall is the, the, the over wall, the upper wall, the symmetry plane is the bottom wall. So the only thing is left that we didn't do anything with is the pipe wall, is, sorry, not the pipe wall, is the butterfly walls right here, okay? So if you click the default domain, you can see that this is the only thing that is going to be selected because the only thing that we didn't mess with, okay? Now we're gonna do some changes to it, all right? Double click it, go to the fluid values tab, and we're gonna change these values also, okay? So how they behave, uh, how the sand behave uh, in the butterfly valve walls, okay? The, the perpendicular coefficient is gonna be 0 0.9 for both sands. You might ask yourself why they are different from the pipe walls, because the the material that the butterfly valve, valve wall is made is different than the material that the pipe wall is made. So they have different coefficients uh, relative to the sand, okay? So you can click apply and okay. And these values usually come from uh, experimental or literature data, okay? This value for these coefficients. Now, Let's set our initial values, okay? Did I just say OK? All right, OK. Go to the global initialization option. Sorry, not global. No, no, global initialization. That this is correct. We're gonna change the Cartesian velocity uh, component from automatic to automatic with value. And I'm guess you already know we're gonna use the expression that we created okay now let's set our solver control options all right let's go to the solver control options make sure that the advection scheme is set to high resolution okay make sure that this is like this the residual target is 10 to the minus 4 the turbulence cinematic is first order now we're gonna change something some stuff in the particle control okay now what you're gonna look for is the, the particle integer time step, which is right here in under particle integration, particle integer time step, and we're gonna leave it as it is, one to the times 10, all right? One times 10 elevated to 10, okay? We're also gonna check the, the particle termination control, okay? And we're gonna check some stuff here as well, all right? We're gonna go to the maximum tracking time 
we're gonna leave it 10 seconds then we're going to do go to the maximum tracking distance we're gonna leave it 10 meters and we're going to go to the maximum number of integration time steps and we're gonna leave it to 10,000 okay you need to check these values otherwise the the, the simulation is gonna go for uh, much longer because it's gonna use the default system values okay now you can click apply and okay and let's run our simulation okay so we're gonna click here we're gonna save our simulation i'm gonna name it pipe valve i'm gonna save it now the solver is gonna open okay we're gonna click start run and we're gonna wait for the simulations to run okay It's not gonna take a long time because our residual target is very, is very forgiving, so to speak. And also, we set up some conditions for the simulation to run faster. And we also gonna, and we are also using a simple geometry of symmetry conditions. Okay, so there we go. The last curve just crossed our threshold. And now it is done. Now I want you guys to send me this screenshot right here. This is the first screenshot of our lecture. Okay, so what that I know that you guys uh, are sending me the correct values. Some of you guys have sent me the this value right here. So not this value, this screenshot right here, trying to trick me. But I guess you didn't notice that. For each computer, you're gonna have a different uh, runtime, and also this thing right here. So some of you guys sent me, and unless you are com you are using my computer name for folders, which is Mavier, I don't know how we're gonna you were getting this this name right here. So keep in mind that to the ones that sent me this picture the ones that I used, I know that you did not do the exercise, okay? So, let's go back, we're gonna click post process result and shut down CFX Solver Manager. Now let's go to the fun part of this problem, okay? The, we're going to see how the sand is eroding the, the walls of the pipe and the butterfly valve okay for this we're going to be using uh the erosion uh rate density parameter that the ANSYS cfx has okay so what you're going to do here we're going to edit this object right here so double click it change constant to variable click on the ellipsis and go here to the sand uh, one way coupled okay and why we're going to use the sand one way couple and not the sand fully coupled because the, the erosion rate is calculated based on the number of particles that you put it okay so the the larger the number of particles the, the more accurate this value is going to be so this is why we're going to use the sand one way coupled and not the sand fully coupled because the sand one way coupled has 5000 particles and the sand sorry the sand one way couple has 5000 particles and the sand fully coupled has only 200 Okay, so you're going to click on the ellipsis, you're going to expand sand one-way coupled, and you're going to select sand one-way coupled erosion rate, all right? And to better see these results, we're going to set the range. So the minimum is going to be zero, and the maximum is going to be 25 kilograms uh, per meter square second, okay? Now you can click apply, and you can see where the erosion is more accentuated so in the red values here you can see that the value for the erosion is higher so we can expect that these walls to be let's say destroyed first by the sand particles okay so uh, as a designer of the the valve you can maybe think okay i know that this part of my valve is gonna be suffering more than the other ones so maybe I can put a special material in the border of my valve 
that is more resistant to the erosion and a more cheaper material that is less resistant to the erosion here because this region is suffering less and you can also see if you go from the from to the behind of the valve we have virtually zero erosion so we can also use a cheaper material in the back side of the valve so that it doesn't so that it makes it cheaper but not compromising the its usefulness okay and you can see that we're gonna and you can see that we're gonna see the particle sands going through these regions here and here in a minute all right so this is the erosion in the pipe not the pipe in the butterfly walls now let's see the erosion in the pipe walls all right so let's do the same let's go select pipe walls go to color change to variable expand go to click on the ellipses expand send one way coupled and select sand erosion rate density the range is going to be the same 0 to 25 we're going to remove we're going to remove the lighting and we can see that right after the valve the what is probably happening here is that the density is that the sand particles are being deflected through here and here and they be, and they are deflected towards the pipe walls as you can see the pipe the, the butterfly valve let me even do this you can see the butterfly valve here it doesn't reach all the way to the top of the, the wall of the pipe okay so you can see that the sand is going to be diverted through the to the walls here and here and we can expect more erosion there and this is exactly what we are observing here more erosion here on the walls because they're being deflected and because they're deflected through a smaller speed they're deflected at a higher velocity here causing even more erosion all right pretty cool huh now let's create uh, the particle tracking okay so we're going to see the path that the the sand particles are going through in our system all right so let's uncheck this let me place this more properly so we can see it better now what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this uh this condition right here res pt for sand fully coupled okay so click it change the max tracks from 25 to 20 so they have a better resolution go to color change the constant to variable and the variable that we're going to use here is going to expand send fully coupled we're going to expand send fully coupled velocity and we're going to select send fully coupled velocity w go to symbol check show symbols and the max time we're gonna set to zero the minimum time we're also gonna set to zero the interval we're gonna set to 0 0.07 seconds and we're also gonna change the symbols uh, the the sorry the scale the scale is gonna be 1.2 instead of 1 all right now you can click apply there we go so we can see 20 uh, particles of sand over here and the pathway that they are going through and you can see for example if i check the valve you can see that where the particles are going more particles are going through with higher velocity the the erosion rate is higher see these values of velocity are higher here which agree with the regions that are suffering more erosion all right now let's create an animation for this all right this is gonna blow your mind i love this part so let's 
right click here, go to predefined camera and set to isometric view Y up, okay? We're also gonna, you can go click here in the in this line where I right click it and reflect mirror in the X axis. There we go. Now we have the image of the full pipe, okay? Now let's create an animation to see how these particles are moving through our system. How we're gonna do this, we're gonna click here in animation, we're gonna select send fully coupled, make sure that you unchecked infinite loop, infinite repeat, check loop, check save movie, we're going to use the MPEG, G MPEG1 format. The name, you can type any name that you want. I'm going to put it like Pow Pipe. I'm going to put it Pipe Tracks. All right, save. And you can ask it to play. And there you go, you can see how the the sand is moving and you can also see that when they go through the valve they speed up right this speed up uh, causes the erosion in the pipe walls all right because the the sands are moving faster and they're they are hitting the pipe walls causing the higher erosion that we observed right here okay that we can see right there all right I, I think this is really, really cool, okay? So, the the other file that I want you guys to send me is this picture right here with the symmetry plane, the sand particles, and the pipe wall... My god, I always say pipe walls. And the butterfly walls... The butter, butterfly valve walls showing. So, I want this image right here, all right? Remember, I want you guys to use this command, blah, 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 the, the 500 scale and all that, all right? The other thing that I want you guys to send me is the, the video that I just showed you guys, okay? This video that we just created, okay? Oops. I'm sorry, the Windows player is a little bit bad, so we're going to use the VLC. There we go, okay? I want you guys to send me this file right here as well, okay? Now... Let's calculate our maximum and minimum and average pressure at the outlet right here. Okay, how we do this? We're going to use the calculator that the CFX has built in, which is pretty, pretty good. So you can click the calculator there, select function calculator. All right. And now we're going to use max value because we're going to see, we want to see the max value of pressure. In at the outlet okay so change the location to outlet and calculate it I want you guys to send me uh, it can be a word file it can be a notepad file where you're gonna put this value right here the maximum value of pressure at the outlet then you're going to select the minimum value and you're gonna send me the minimum value of pressure at the outlet and then you're gonna select the area average and then you're gonna send me this average value of pressure at the outlet okay so this is I, what I want you guys to send me I want you guys to send me the image from the solver I want you guys to send me this image I want you guys to send me the video of the particle the sand particles going through the system and I want you guys to send me a notepad file or a word file that has the values of maximum minimum and average pressure at the outlet okay so this is it guys I hope you enjoyed the, this problem. I think this is a very interesting problem. It's a very hydraulic and engineered uh, focus problem. These things that we showed here can help you create a better pipe, uh, a better butterfly valve or any other uh, obstruction for that matter. It can tell us how the any type of intrusion in our water system can cause many problems like erosion and therefore uh, pipe eruption and other stuff so i really think this problem is very very cool right hope you guys enjoyed it as well see you guys next week okay